Ryan grew up in Yanzu City. He was raised by his grandmother. He had four sisters and one brother, but Ben stayed in the house with the grandmother. I don't know how that came about, I think because he was the first born and she lived alone. But his grandmother is the one that spoiled him. <laughs> she went out every night and bought him ice cream. He was still addicted to that when we got married. <laughs> But the family was a loving, close family. They're a very close-knit family. His mother was crazy about him. His sisters and brothers, too. But he was a lot older than the sisters and brothers. From what I knew, a very, very good childhood. He went to a Catholic school. The nuns there was very, very impactful when it comes to Ben's life, because he talked about them all the time. And they had a lot of influence over him. I think he started getting interested in sports there. I met Ben actually, uh, we were both selected for the high school all-star game. Uh, there were two other signees, Ole Miss signees that were selected for the North team. And so first met Ben at Mississippi College where we practiced for the, for the all-star game. That was 1972, 50 years ago. The North against the South. The North, we won the game. Ben had a great game. And again, a testament to his character. He was one of the captains of the team, so he, in less than a week, the, the, the players voted him to be captain of that team. So that shows the kind of guy Ben was and uh, clearly a dominant football player at, at, at camp. I first met Ben when he was a senior at Yazoo City. Warner had him up for a visit and I met him and a lot of other ones. Of course, Ben sort of stood out. We'd been in business since 1848 and uh, we'd never had a black student until 1962 and we didn't have any athletes at that time on scholarship or playing on our teams. So uh, we were one of the very few totally segregated, white segregated teams in America, and we needed to do something about it. We were both being recruited uh, by Ole Miss, uh, as well as other schools to play football. I, uh, of course, read where Ben had signed with Ole Miss, and we would occasionally talk on the telephone. And uh, so I called him up and I said, man, I said, uh, you sign. I said, well, you sign. He said, yeah, that's what I'm going. I said, okay. And we couldn't have gotten a better person than Ben. He had the biggest, happiest smile. The big, big face, big body, big smile. It's delightful. And he laughed, he laughed real loud. So he was well received, as well received as a black person could be that year. You know, we started, when we, our first practice we started in, we weren't in full pads. And so it was just a lot of running and conditioning and it wasn't apparent yet that Ben was gonna be the, as good as he was. But as soon as we put on full pads and started playing for real, uh, wow, he just, he stood out. He, he was one of the biggest players on the team, but in those days, uh, 250 pounds was big. What made him really stand out was that he was uh, exceptionally quick for his size. And in football, that seems to be the thing that matters the most, whether you're a back or a lineman. If you, if you have that exceptional quickness, you're gonna win most of your battles, and he did. We didn't have anybody on the freshman team that could block him, and so well, that was why he got moved up to the varsity. So he went right up to the varsity, and I think early on, that was tough on him being, he was the youngest player on the varsity, and he was the only African American on the varsity. When he came up as freshman, he was pretty raw. Uh, I was talking to Art Bressler, who was a guard. He said Ben didn't know how to throw a forearm when he first came up in 1972, and uh, all he would do is kind of grab you, which is not a good technique. And Art claims that he taught Ben how to throw a forearm to the chagrin of me and another other people who received that forearm. But it was the fall of 1975. Uh, they had the Oklahoma drill back then where you would get on a board and you would have the offensive player try to block the defensive player on the board. Not easy to do, uh, but funny thing was, uh, you would see we would both line up, the defensive players would be on one side, offensive players on the other, 
And uh, it was always funny to watch the freshmen in the back of it. They were counting to see which number would get Ben. After I became an upperclassman, when we'd have the Oklahoma drills, I used to count the players till Ben, and I'd make maybe freshmen move up or behind me so I wouldn't have to go against Ben. <laughs> and uh, kind of embarrassing to say that, but I wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to have to be facing Ben. A player uh, tried to, well, actually successfully blocked Ben. His name was Curtis Weathers, who was a sophomore when Ben was a senior. Ben was a nice enough guy, and he thought, well, I'll just take it easy on Curtis. I'm strong enough, and dang if Curtis didn't get in that Oklahoma drill and blow Ben back several feet. And Coach Carmody was standing right over him and said a few expletives. Ben, get your back in there, and don't you do that. Unfortunately, Curtis was through, and I was the next one up. And he went from like, which I realized, 65% being to game day being. And he hit this guy and laid him out. And that's probably the hardest I've ever been hit. He was something else uh, on the practice field. That forearm he had was something else. I told him, hey, hey, we was going through drills one day, and I said, man, I said, I'm not your enemy, hey. I had a chance to go against him in practice. I wouldn't never let him hit me. I wouldn't let him hit me. I would run away from him. Ben uh, never hit me, and I was glad. <laughs> he never hit me. So Ben had this thing he would do sometime, which was funny. I would make the tackle, or Pete would make the tackle, or George Stewart would make the tackle. And Ben would lay there and be the last one to get up. Ben Williams on the tackle. <laughs> I looked at him one time, Ben, all you did was lay there. He says, ah, fame is tough, Johnson, fame is tough. And I'm like, I just shake my head. There were some guys that led with their mouth. Uh, ben didn't really talk a lot unless you started saying something to him. But I remember one guy we played it was against uh, LSU, I remember. And he said a couple of things that I knew set Ben off. And the rest of the game, Ben spent more time hammering that lineman. His secondary mission was getting to the running back. As Pete Robinson would say, communicating with him with a fall. We played, uh, we played Mississippi State uh, in 1975. We didn't have the internet uh, or the World Wide Web uh, in the 70s, but we did have a thing called a clarion ledger. The week before the Mississippi State game, Richard Keyes made the mistake of saying that he was not going to do anything special to handle General Ben because he thought he could be capable of doing that. A word leaked out to different players that Ben was not very happy about that. And Coach Carmody told Ben, don't you say anything in the press about this. You just hold it back. I got hit hard by General Ben before, but I've never seen a hit that hard. He was playing nose guard, head up Richard Keyes. And General Ben had a forearm with that left forearm. And he hit Richard Keyes and knocked him back about, as I recall, three and a half yards. Five yards, about 10 yards. With what we used to call the flipper, which was his left forearm when he charged off the line and hit him, knocked him up in the air, knocked the quarterback down, and they fumbled the ball. We got a penalty of five yards for him jumping off sides. But that poor guy had a long day. I believe the story was that uh, Richard Keyes did not make it through the entire game. Watching him practice, watching him play uh, the various games that we played in and, and watching him uh, destroy offenses. He was just a great guy on the field and off the field. He was the kind of guy who would give you a shirt off his back and, and uh, whether you were uh, an athlete or not. But of course, you know, we, we, we played in some great games together. Uh, one of the games that uh, comes to mind is the Tennessee game. Uh, it's uh, legislative day. We were playing the University of Tennessee on national television. 
But that day in, in uh, Jackson, Mississippi, the Ole Miss team led by Coach Johnny Vault, you know, ruled the day. And of course, Ben was defensive player of the game and I was offensive player of the game, which, which meant that we were recipients of the uh, Chevrolet uh, Foundation Award, $1,000 scholarship. As we talked about that, well, we knew uh, that we, we had decided that we wanted to ensure that minorities other minorities were going to be a recipient of, of, of those uh, scholarships. And of course, we went to uh, the power that be and we said, hey, you know, we'd like these to go to minorities. And there were four students who received uh, $500 scholarships apiece uh, for freshmen, incoming freshmen. We were universally accepted by, uh, by, by the student body. Most of the student body thought very highly of, of Ben Williams and, and of the other African-American athletes. And of course, it, it culminated in Ben Williams uh, being voted Mr. Ole Miss. I think Ben thought about this and uh, he realized the historical significance of what he was doing. I think he really gave some uh, thought about it. And because at the time it was, it was relatively controversial because all of a sudden you were Colonel Rebel. I think Ben just decided that it was necessary to run. He felt like it was important to send a message that Ole Miss had changed and that he was worthy. And uh, and he went out and sold himself. He sold himself to the student body. He was, he was well known and well loved by everybody on that campus. And I don't think it was a very tight election. Uh, I think it was probably a landslide because he was, uh, again, known and loved by everybody on campus uh, as a great guy. Not a black guy, but a great guy. Ben got drafted by the Buffalo Bills in 1976 and he played 10 years there. And I understand he was elected captain seven out of the 10 years. And you just kind of think a uh, Yazoo City, Mississippi kid going to Buffalo, New York, and the players up there from all across the country think so much of Ben that they decided to elect him captain seven out of the 10 years. The biggest thing that uh, I think that a lot of people didn't realize about Ben was that he was extremely self-conscious of being known just an athlete. He wanted to be well-rounded. Uh, he took a, a lot of pride in the fact he graduated and that he made All-American and All-Conference and that he played pro ball. I think he made some type of pro recognition one or two years at Buffalo. Uh, but the fact that he graduated and that he was in the league with a degree, he took a lot of uh, pride in that. Ben knew that we had found a way to get on the inside, so to speak. He knew that we had access to individuals and that we could use that platform to open doors for others, and especially for minority students who needed a, a hand up, so to speak. Quite often he would, uh, if he had to make a phone call to certain individuals that had influence, he didn't have a problem doing so, uh, to make sure that a young person got in college uh, and uh, got help financially. So we ended up coming up with the Minority Scholarship Endowment and we raised money and we were doing pretty good, but we didn't get it endowed. And then someone said, who could bring the whole Ole Miss family together so everyone would support the scholarship? And the name that everyone said was Ben William. He was inclusive, everyone loved him. He loved everyone. If anybody could get that scholarship endowed, it would be Ben Williams. And thus was born the Ben Williams Scholarship Fund that continues to support students on this campus to this day. I guess this was probably my sophomore year of school. You know, we were, you know, just kind of enjoying life, probably partying a little too much, uh, probably not taking schoolwork as seriously as we should. And I remember one Saturday morning, I got a knock at the door in the dorm and I opened the door, it was Ben Williams. And he was like, hey, you guys, we, you guys, let's go eat breakfast. And I was like, man, this is so cool, Ben Williams buying us breakfast. And uh, Ben told us, hey, a lot of people made a lot of sacrifices for y'all to be here. Uh, your grades are slipping get your work done and quit messing up. I was like, man, what in the world is Ben Williams talking to me about my grades? How does he even know? 
So I was wondering, you know, did they mail him a copy of my grades or what? So I was walking along uh, in the student union on Monday morning and I ran into Sparky Reardon. And Sparky said uh, in his Sparky Reardon voice, uh, hey Xavier, did you, did you see Ben Williams over the weekend? I said, yeah, I did see Ben Williams over the weekend. I said, and he asked me about my grades. What is Ben Williams asking me about my grades for? He said, man, I kind of told him you weren't doing what you're supposed to. And I was hoping he could kind of get you back on track. And I was like, but Ben Williams, did you have to call Ben Williams to do it? You know, after seeing him and the, the role model that he was, it told me that I can be in my own business. And I never probably would have dreamed that it was possible if I hadn't made those visits to Ole Miss and met people who looked like me, spoke for me, came from small towns. Again, I was not an athlete, so uh, getting to the NFL, NBA was an option for Xavier. But uh, maybe running my own business and being successful that way was a way. And Ben is one of those guys that was influential in my life. I think it, it speaks volumes that um, a kid from Yazoo City, Mississippi, could could actually go off and, and achieve his dreams and use that to um, to get a college degree. Back then, it wasn't a lot of, of, of African Americans getting college degrees, let alone at, at the University of Mississippi. And he did it in a way that people are still glorifying him today. People are still, he, he left his legacy. I had a student that was, um, going to play football at Ole Miss a few years ago. And I was telling him, hey, this is who my dad is. And he was like, yeah, I'm gonna break his record. So I think it just gives people um, something to look forward to, something to strive for. Um, I wanna be as good as or better than him. What do I have to do to achieve what he achieved? If you Google Ole Miss's Ben Williams, you'll find uh, offensive lineman from Yazoo City my first African American to play football for Ole Miss. But I think you should find a whole lot more. Student leader, community servant, Ole Miss servant, husband who loved Linda, father, and really important to my journey, role model. When I was a freshman at Ole Miss, I really wanted to be involved and engaged on campus. I looked around to see if there are any other African American students who were engaged. There was Ben Williams, elected by popular vote, Colonel Reb, and named to the Ole Miss Student Hall of Fame, what better role model? Marion Wright Elman from the Children's Defense Fund once said, you cannot be what you cannot see. You cannot be what you cannot see. Ben Williams allowed us to see opportunity. He allowed us to see that we as students could be a vital part of the Ole Miss family and of the institution we loved. When I think of General Ben's impact and how it has influenced me. I think about a quote by the literary great Toni Morrison, and she said, you know, if you have power, your job is to empower others. If you are free, your job is to set others free. I think about how General Ben used his athletic prowess, his celebrity, to really create a wedge for people and, and opportunity for folks that might not otherwise have had it. In 1997, Ben Williams was uh, inducted into the Sports Hall of Fame. Two years later, Ben was selected by the board to represent all of the Hall of Fame members as a board member. That year, I also became president of the board. The board budget was projected to have a $75,000 deficit at the end of my first year. And in order to alleviate that unacceptable situation, we created the fifth anniversary celebration of the museum opening. And part of that opening included auctions of Hall of Fame experiences. My brother and I bid on an experience that Ben Williams offered. He offered to take two people to the opening game in Buffalo between the Buffalo Bills and the New Orleans Saints. It happened to be Deuce McAllister's initial professional event. 
My nephew loved the saints. And so Ben took me and my 17-year-old nephew, William, to Buffalo. Everywhere we went in Buffalo, people wanted to talk to Ben. They wanted to hug him. They wanted to shake hands with him. And that's 16 years after he had played in Buffalo. They loved him as much as we did. I asked William what he remembered about Ben, and let me quote. I recall Ben's warm and welcoming personality. He had the most infectious smile and laugh. He was also maybe the biggest human I've ever met. He was a gentle, kind giant. I was so proud walking around Buffalo with everybody crowding around him that he was ours. He was representing my school. He was representing my Hall of Fame in Jackson, and he was one of us. When you look back now, 50 years later, um, and all the opportunities that um, a lot of our minority student athletes, our, our African-American student athletes have, um, it took people like Ben Williams. It took people like Coolidge Ball. It took people like James Reeve. You know, these folks that, that were the pioneers, you know, to, to do it first. And, um, you know, the thing about Ben is, you know, he was a fantastic player, clearly. Had a great career in the NFL. But what I, what's so cool to me about his story is that people that really knew him quickly talk about that, but then they move on to the fact that he was just a great person, you know, and everybody liked him. and. Um, just how, you know, he, he, if you're in a room with him, he was just so magnetizing, everybody would gravitate to him. So um, I think it's just really cool and he's meant so much to our university. And I think now with it being 50 years later, um, this is very important, you know, that, that we, we tell his story with what he was able to do for Ole Miss and, and to carry, you know, the Ole Miss brand into professional sports and even beyond professional sports and continue to love this university. His experience here changed the lives of, of many, many people and he didn't even know it at the time. Mr. Ben, I would like to say Thank you for your heart. Thank you for your inspiration. Thank you for being what a student athlete was and should be to this day. What you did so many years ago, uh, paving the way for so many like myself, um, I am really grateful. And for us, you know, we just, we can't think of any better way to honor him than to retire his jersey permanently, put it up on the you know, up on the stadium so that people can see it every Saturday and, and, and every day they come into the stadium. This is something that um, is long overdue. Um, I think doing it in the 50th year of, of him coming here as a freshman um, is, is needed and the right thing to do. Uh, but more importantly, it's something that his family and, and his friends will always be able to cherish. And um, we just look forward to, uh, to doing that later this year during the Mississippi State game. It makes me so sad that he's not with us today. I hope he's looking down and he's gonna see 74. And knowing that just like the people in Buffalo loved him 16 years after he played, the people at Ole Miss love him 50 years after he played. And we will be able to tell our children and our grandchildren, hey, that's number 74. He was a fabulous Ole Miss football player, but even more than that, he was a fabulous guy. And we love him and we loved him. If I had to describe Ben Williams in one word, it would be galvanizing. Fantastic. Loving man. Humble. Level-headed. Loyal. Fearless. Powerful. Awesome. Impactful. But that's more than one word but we'll take gentle, gentle being.